Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the James Oldowitz Central High School here in DeWitt, New York, for this contest between the visiting Scanny Atlas Lakers and your James Oldowitz Red Rams. Hi everybody, Sam Gelfand, the voice of the Red Rams, here alongside my broadcast partner Tyler Aitken, and we are very excited for this one to kick off because this should be a great matchup between two premier basketball programs. It's going to be a great game. James Will DeWitt, five and two record going into this game. Skinny Atlas, a six and two record. But one thing to watch out for, two starters for the James Will DeWitt Red Rams are out today. Avis Sandroni, the leading scorer for the Red Rams is out with an injury. And Victoria Payne, who leads the team in steals, is also out for the Rams. So will the Red Rams be able to battle back from the injury bug? We'll find out in just a moment as these two teams are just about ready to get underway. It's going to be Ava or Ayla Pascal who will go for the tip for Scanny Atlas, who was a monster on the volleyball court earlier in the fall. And Sadie Withers at five foot six will attempt to take it for the Red Rams. And here we are. Pascal pulling it down for the Lakers and Scanny Atlas with first possession, starting out as Maddie Ramsgard, who we're going to have to watch all game long. Quick pass over to Katie Reed. Not sure what to do with it. Cannot penetrate the key. Ball goes off the foot, and that is Maeve McNeil called for a kick. Scanny Atlas still has the ball, though. Ball went off two different people's feet. Reed is vi in violation of the five second rule. And the Red Rams will get possession for the first time today. And that's the first look at a very active Red Rams defense. They only allow 40.7 points a game, which is a very low number, especially for high school basketball. So that'll be something to keep an eye on, seeing if Skinny Atlas can break through that tough defense. Only one way to find out, but that'll be in a bit because Sadie Withers takes the shot from the wing and it rattles out. That is as painful as you can get when you're a player. Ramsgard now sends it out to Wagner. Wagner around the key off the side of the basket, rebounded by the Red Rams. Both of these teams love the rebound. As Macy Durkin, quick pass over to Withers, hits Zogby at the top. Sends it to McKenney. McKenney to Bella Sindoni, starting in place of Ava Sandroni today. Durkin, quick pass out to Sindoni, long two. And it finds its destination, ultimately, Red Rams with the first two points of the day. And that's where James Oldewitt shoots best from, that deep wing. That's still a two-point shot. The Red Rams actually shoot over 20 or over 50% from that range of the court. And now it's Rams guard at the point guard slot. Sent over to Reed, to Wagner, and Pascal attempts the shot, rebounded by Withers. Durkin quickly over to S uh, Zogby, excuse me. And here comes the quick shot off the mark, courtesy of McKinney, and a shooting foul drawn by Macy Durkin. Take one more look at it here. And both of these teams currently starting off hot, even though neither of them have really found the basket yet. And Durkin misses her first free throw. It, we're, it looks like we're going to be in the run for a lower scoring game. Both of these defenses have been playing great so far and neither offense has been very prolific both scoring under 50 points a game and JD doesn't even have a double digit score especially not with Ava Sandroni on the bench today as Pascal tries to box out and has said the ball goes out off the hands of Matty Ramsgard Kind of funny to think that two and a half minutes have elapsed and we've only seen three points. 
course, the Red Rams with a record of 5-2 and two coming into this game. The Scania Atlas Lakers a record of 6-2. and two. So two talented programs as Sindoni sends it into Dirk and underneath rolls off the rim and rebounded by Ramsgard. And that's exactly the type of shot the Red Rams want, just couldn't convert there. That sentence had more R's than a pirate ship. The Red Rams getting looks, but being unable to turn looks into action. As Reed with a long pass into Wagner. Wagner pivoting back to Reed. Quickly over to Pascal. Off the hands of Wagner and a JD ball. So Miriam Zogby will be the one to take it across half court. And as we watch JD come up on offense, let's take a look at how Skinny Atlas is set up. They're in a 1-2-2 two, two zone defense, which is a zone defense used by barely any teams anymore. But what's interesting there is they have two players positioned right at the short wings, which is exactly where JD wants to score the ball from. That's where they shoot well. So it's going to be difficult for JD not only not having their, not, not having their leading score, but they also seem to have their best spot to score from being very well defended. So our big quick pass over to Sindoni. Another long two attempt. This one does not connect, but Maddie McKenney does off the rebound. And those points in the paint are going to be key for the Red Rams tonight. Exactly. The one downfall of a zone defense is that it's a lot harder to box out and rebound out of, which could provide some difficulty for Skinny Atlas and let JD get some easy second chance points. However, if that ball goes off the hand of Durkin and out of play, and we're already about halfway through the first quarter, it's flying by. And the pass in from Reed goes out of bounds. Bit of a strange angle. Reed. Finally hits Ramsgard. Ramsgard from the top. That's a three-point shot, but it doesn't matter because Durkin gets a rebound and takes it across half court now. Zogby pass to Withers, who exploded for a career-high 12 points in her last game, but a timeout is called by the Red Rams. Let's take a quick look at how these two teams are doing this season as we're going to have to talk loud because Mr. Goodson, our athletic director, who's controlling the music today, is always insistent on trying to get us a copyright strike by playing the most well-known songs imaginable. So instead, let's take a look through these stats. The Red Rams and the Lakers have pretty similar points per game numbers. It's funny because the Red Rams are considered a defensive team but the Lakers actually have scored less points per game, or allow less points per game than the Red Rams do. And there's actually been several games where the Lakers have only allowed 25 points, which speaks to their defensive value, but also might mean they're playing against some inferior offenses, which could skew that number down a little bit. Now, the Red Rams do average more rebounds per game than the Lakers do, but here's what could be key. This free throw percentage here. Red Rams shooting 62.2 from the charity stripe. The Lakers only 48.8. The Lakers actually have not taken many free throws this season. And so if they go to the stripe, they could be in trouble, especially if this one gets close later into the game. And we still got to keep talking because the song reaches its crescendo, and here we go. Okay. Zogby tries to drive in. Instead going outside as McKenney overshoots it and right into the waiting hands of Katie Reed. Reed taking it down court. Quick pass to Ramsgard. She has enough time to set up, shoot, and bucket. First two points of the day for the Scania Atlas Lakers coming off of Matty Ramsgard and who more fitting to do it than the one player who's averaging 15.4 points per game. And we, we're seeing a little bit of a defensive adjustment here. Skinny Atlas was in a 1-2-2 two, two zone. Now they're in a 2-3 zone, which will force JD to have to adjust their offense and run some different plays. 
It's an Ogby attempt in a three, but a short one still rattled off. And JD will get possession from the looks of things. You know, we're talking about zone, but the Red Rams are one of those rare high school teams that you're seeing run man-to-man -man on occasion. And we've seen them run it the whole game. They haven't changed it. It'll be interesting to see if they do flex a little bit. But it's been working for them all season. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's probably what Coach Sweeney would say. Now Ramsgard hanging out beyond the arc. Hits Maeve McNeil. And she cannot hit Ramsgard. Goes the Red Rams' way. And that wasn't a steal, but it was a forced turnover, which the Red Rams are very good at. They forced 21.4 turnovers per game, that is which is great for their defense. However, one thing to keep in mind, they also have 22.6 turnovers per game, which does speak to a little bit of sloppy basketball to start the season. Maybe they'll clean it up as the season goes along. Anaya Neal has come in off the bench. Sintoni knocked down. The ball knocked out of her hands by Ramsgard. Ramsgard takes it across half court. Hits McNeil. Has time to set, but cannot connect. Rebounded by Neal, and she's going to be a difference maker underneath the basket. She averages almost six rebounds per game. Great on the boards and great on offense, too. She's actually the second leading scorer for the Red Rams, providing 8.8 .8 points a game. And Neal attempted another rebound. Still gets it at the end of the day, even if it went off her fingers. Neal, just a sophomore at 5'10". She has all the potential in the world. Sintoni thinks about shooting. Instead, hits Withers. And Withers still has not hit a three-point shot this season. She is 0 for 15. And hopefully she'll settle into her shooting stroke as the season goes on. It's not uncommon for teams to shoot poorly at the beginning of the season. We've certainly seen that with James Old DeWitt in general. They're averaging about 30% shooting from the field. Well, it's an interesting thing because Withers, of course, the younger sister of John Marshall Withers, one of the best three-point shooters that JD might have ever seen. She hasn't really found her rhythm from downtown yet, but she did find a rhythm underneath the basket last game against Fulton. And who else has Ayla Pascal who puts up two? So if Withers can keep working towards the key, she'll be able to put more points in the column. And she's kept a little close for the referee's comfort there. We thank you so very much for joining us here live on JDTV. Sam Gelfand and Tyler Aitken here, and Amanda Aitken helping us out on camera, meaning that every single one of your siblings has helped out JDTV at some point. It runs in the family. That's four of us helping JDTV and uh, happy to help make the broadcast go. And Neil tries to help the Red Rams widen their gap, but she'll have to do it from the stripe. Neil shooting 63.3 in free throws, 19 for 30 on the season, but she is not getting the free throw. Instead, it goes to Maisie Durkin. Out to Withers, who will try from three. Make that 0 for 17. Katie Reed, pass over to Ramsgard. She has enough time. Red Rams didn't get there. Takes a funny bounce, but finds the basket at the end of the day, and that's what matters. And JD started this game up 5-0, but at the end of the first quarter, there's a very good chance they could be losing to the Lakers now. That 2-3 zone defense adjustment seems to be the difference maker for the Lakers right now. Zongby benefits from the pick by Durkin. Pass out to Withers. Pivoting, trying to find an option. Pass interdicted by Ramsgard. And blue skies ahead for Maeve McNeil. And Brown Baskets. Five seconds left in the first quarter off the foot of Ramsgard. And the Red Rams certainly need to make some adjustments here defensively, or offensively, pardon me. They're setting some screens against the zone, which can sometimes work, not always. And I think they need to be passing the ball more inside to suck that zone defense in a little bit more. Zogby, quick pass to Withers, desperation shot off the glass, and the second one will not get off before the end of the first quarter. 
At this time, the Scanny Atlas Lakers leading over the Red Rams 8-5 in a very closely fought defensive contest. It's been great defense. We expected that coming into the game. Both of these teams get a, force a lot of steals, force a lot of turnovers, and it has been a sloppy first half, a lot of missed shots here. So I think both teams are going to be looking to clean it up on the offensive end and are probably happy with where they sit defensively. Now, while we're talking about sloppy shots and whatnot, let's take a look at today's JD score report. As you can see on your screen, this is a heat map of the field goal percentage for the Red Rams throughout this season. And the Red Rams seem to be most comfortable on these wings here, which is what you were saying that the zone defense is combating. Both the 1-2-2 two, two zone defense and the 2-3 zone defense have defenders positioned right in those areas. So I don't know if Skinny Atlas watched film or how they prepared for this game, but it seems like they knew exactly where they needed to stop the shooters from JD. And of course, the Red Rams also doing pretty well up top in the middle here. As we are about ready to be underway with quarter number two. Don't forget that we have a live comment section here on JDTV. And if you have something to say, any thoughts on how this game is going, anything you want to share with us, go ahead. And if we like it, we might even read it out on the air. As Macy Durkin will get things going for the Red Rams in quarter number two. And Ian Neal tries for the long two and overshoots it, rebounded by Katie Reed. Rams guard takes it across. Quickly hits Bella Petropoli. First action we're seeing from her today. Reed underneath the basket, dribbles all the way around. Pass out to Ramsgard. And there's one of those signature turnovers forced by the Red Rams. It won't go in the stat book as a steal, but that's great perimeter defense. And it is a forced turnover. It matters just as much, giving them an extra possession here. Durkin out to Zogby. Another zone switch by Scanny Atlas. And the Red Rams could not defeat it in that scenario. Looks like they're back to the 1-2-2. Two, two. Looks like a 1-2-2. Two, two. It might have even been a 3-2 zone defense. Regardless, they're trusting their players to run around and try to create some commotion for the Red Rams on offense. Interesting to see a possible 3-2 considering that the Red Rams are only shooting 18.5 from beyond the arc. And I know strategically it might not make perfect sense, but I think their strategy is to force change because against each type of zone defense, JD needs to run a different offense. They need different motion. And if they create one possession of messiness for the Red Rams, each time they switch, I think they'll be happy with that. By the way, one for two was Gabby Schnorr from the free throw line is Matty Rams guard now. Is at the top looking for an option. Red Rams still playing man-to-man. -man. Hits Reed. Off Reed's foot, not called for a kick. But instead, Miriam Zogby called for a push. And that was great defense by Neil poking that ball out. Just couldn't convert to take the ball away completely. Durkin coming off the court. Being replaced by Kat DeForest. The junior forward, this is only her fourth game of the season. And Maeve McNeil looking for an option to pass into. Finds Ramsgard. Ramsgard guarded by Schnorr. Gets around. Shot is a little bit undercooked. Might want to put it back in the oven for a little bit more time. She'll have another chance, though. Assuredly, there's plenty of game left. Zogby now. Schnorr back to Zogby. It's Grace Habaika, back to Zogby. Habaika catches the tall pass, back to Zogby, and the Red Rams are having to watch that shot clock. Sloppy pass in, taken right out of thin air by Faith Wagner. The Red Rams cannot wait until there's seven seconds left on the shot clock to get the ball in the paint. They need to do that a lot earlier because they have not been hitting threes all season. Wagner trying to force her way in, and she does draw the foul. Way to, way to drop the shoulder. 
creating contact is what's important as long as the ref leans your way that's exactly what coaches want if you create contact there's a good chance you get a foul or you make a make a basket faith wagner shooting nine for 15 make that 10 for 16 on this season coming into this game with a 60 percent shooting percentage Ends up one for two. Foul called on, looks like that's Claire Newman. And a timeout called by Scanny Atlas now. A full timeout to boot. You know, today is kind of informally alumni day for the Red Rams. As we have been told that several notable members of the Red Rams past and present are here today. Including Momo LeClaire, who the Red Rams assuredly, they absolutely wish that she was on the court right now. No one else they would rather have. She's playing D1 ball down at Drexel, having a great start to her first season. And she played for the Red Rams for five or six seasons, I believe. We've got... Another player, Durkin, on the Rams, who was pulled up in middle school. But there's a long history of dominance for J.D. Red Rams basketball, so I'm sure a lot of former players are happy to come back and support the squad. I've also been told by name that Lily Lowenguth, Everly Kessler, and Kaylee McKenna are all here in the audience today, all of whom were very productive for the Red Rams in past seasons. And it's great to have them back in the J.D. gym. And the Red Rams take possession now. Six minutes left in the first half. Abaika pass to Neal. Neal, quick no-looker over to Zogby. Hits to Forrest. Neal for three. And it counts. That'll tie things up. That was one of the few threes JD has made all season, and they will take it. There's not a better time it could have happened. Anaya Neal shooting 25% from beyond the arc. And Ramsgard couldn't make that one work. Yet another defensive rebound by the Red Rams. The Red Rams eat up on those defensive rebounds. Whereas Scanny Atlas, much more of an offensive rebounding team. Hobika oh, drops the mic from Long. And that is a six point swing for the Red Rams. Six quick buckets to go from a three point deficit to a three point lead. They need to capitalize on defense here and get a few more stops. And you could hear that fire up the JD gym. This could be the turning point that the Red Rams need as McNeil has to hold on to it. And Neil says, I will take that. Thank you very much. So I'll be with some stop and go. Neil has plenty of time. And the Red Rams are on a free three-point streak, forcing the timeout from Skinny Atlas because the Red Rams are taken fresh out of that oven. They are so hot right now. That's the first time all season I've seen three quick threes from the Red Rams. I was a little worried at that last shot by Neil. Thought it might be a heat check, but no. She drilled it with confidence, and the Red Rams are hitting them. I wouldn't stop coming out of this timeout. I'd keep shooting them, shooting them until they miss. Talk about a heat check. You want to stick that thermometer into that casserole? You're not going to be able to take it out without an oven mitt. That's a nine-point run in just about a minute. That's exactly what the Red Rams needed and have certainly wanted to see this entire game as they finally seem to be getting something going against the Lakers. So if I were the coach of Skinny Atlas right now, I would be telling my players that they need to be doing a lot better job of challenging shooters. One shot, two shot from a poor shooting team, you just let them take it. But once they make that third shot, you can't let it happen again. They've proven they can make it. So this is an in-game adjustment that needs to happen for the Lakers. And now Matty Ramsgard in charge. Wagner with a moving pick. And there is time for Katie Reed, which she takes advantage of. And the Scanny Atlas Lakers with a little bit of one-upsmanship. And so you can see now already the Lakers defenders are challenging shots a little bit more, and it helped force some commotion and get that steal. 
as they challenge Cat to Forest. Once again, the Red Rams down two of their most productive players today, Victoria Payne and, more crucially, Ava Sandroni, who leads this team in scoring. Both are out with injuries tonight. And so they're going to have to rely a little bit more on that bench depth. Red Rams only fielding 11 players on the squad, and Neal attempts her second steal of the day, rolls out of bounds, and that is a Red Ram ball. Might not count as a steal on the scorebook, but effectively it was one for Anaya Neal. And Neal's been doing that all day. There's been a few forced turnovers by her, and then obviously those few threes have really helped the Red Rams squad. So she's really taking a step up to provide some offense and defense that both Ava, Sandroni, and Victoria Payne were providing before. DeForest with a pass in, and that three-pointer does not work out, but the Red Rams get that rebound immediately, courtesy of Schnoor. Zogby now will take a moment to recombobulate. She's got plenty of time on the shot clock to do so. Neal tries to get something going. Long two from the wing. Doesn't work. Rebounded by Pascal. Now McNeil, bounce pass. Passed out to McNeil. Back to Ramsgard. Thought about going for three. Decides against it. Right closely by Schnoor. Reed passes around to Wagner. Three-pointer from the wing. Rebounded instead by Grace Hobaika. The Red Rams gave the Lakers plenty of opportunities there, but they could not take it. And Anaya Neal draws the foul. So now that the Lakers are challenging three-point shots so much, what I would do if I were JD is to pass it to the wing pump fake and then you've got the whole world open to you inside you can really distribute it more and try to get more of those interior baskets that they usually make nice save by Wagner gives it to Ramsgard Ramsgard tries to go on a fast break sends it out instead to Reed who cannot make her second three-pointer and Neil collapses getting that rebound good hustle red ram ball that was a great hustle play by Neal on this rebound. She took some contact from behind, and that's what caused the fall. But she's been hustling all day, and it's made all the difference. And Durkin now setting up a play at half court. Quick pass to Hobaika. 2-3 zone employed by the Lakers. Pass to Durkin. And overshot by Schnorr. Ramsgard now will reset. Reed might have an opening under the basket, has to pass it out because Neal was right there. A little skyhook action from Ayla Pascal. You know, we were talking about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar before the game. Zogby with the pass to Hobaika, underbaked. Tipped out of bounds and will go blue way. So I had said J.D. needs to keep shooting the three until they start missing it, and I think at this point they can call it quits and start trying to make some more baskets inside because that's several air balls, several misses, and it's giving the Lakers so much time of possession to really work with and break down their defense. Wagner tried the no-looker. Instead found Hobaika. Durkin will hustle. Neal decides to hang beyond the arc, and she almost makes it, but not quite. And, hey, you know what they say about horseshoes. McNeil with a quick pass to Pascal, challenged in the lane by Neal. And Pascal will get the one-and-one. One. Pascal, 13 for 29 this season in free throws. Like we said, this could be an issue for the Lakers if they keep going to the line. That's 43 from the stripe if you're keeping track, it's it, keeping score at home. Though she hits both. Four points tonight for Pascal. Yeah, 115 remains. 
in the first half of this contest. Withers back out on the court now. Quick pass out to Durkin, hits Hobika. Hobika at the top of the key to Withers. And the referee not, not a fan of that. And that was a three second violation right there. Something the Red Rams might need to keep an eye on. It's very common against zone defenses to get lazy as a big man, stay inside for too long and get that called on you. Gotta keep it moving. So Reed with a quick pass. Newman couldn't connect. Wagner has all the time in the world. Pull that three point of the right of the Valkyries. She was able to take her time and that was a really pretty shot. The Lakers might need to feed her a little bit more in this second half. Wagner averaging 8.3 points per game. That's her fourth tonight. 30 seconds left as it rolls out of bounds. Wagner actually 11 two-pointers this season and 10 three-pointers, so she is very comfortable wherever she wants to take that shot. And the pass inbound is intercepted by Katie Reed. Reed, quick bouncer to Ramsgard up against the glass, and that's the kind of thing that you train for day in and day out. Timeout called by the Red Rams, a full one. And that was some great ball movement by the Lakers on this fast break. They got a three-on-one opportunity, and it resulted in a pretty easy basket to, put, basket to put them up for. And you know, we haven't really had a chance to talk a little bit about, a little bit more about the Skinny Atlas Lakers. Let's take a, a look at the few things that they're real good at. They are killer when they get inside of the key. They have made far more two-pointers and three-pointers this season. 111 versus 16 coming into this contest. They are voracious rebounders, especially on offense. They're shooting from close to the basket, and then they're making sure they're right there to snatch it back out if it doesn't work out. As we've already seen, Maddie Ramsgard a focal point of this offense and will continue to be so in the second half. However, they are reluctant from long range. Like I said, only 16 three-pointers coming into this game, and we've already talked about the fact that they are not so comfortable at the charity strike. That was my pregame prediction, Tyler. You think it's lining up? I think it's lining up pretty well. It's a very low-scoring game, like you, you and me had both said. And I think both teams are going to try to have to make adjustments in the second half. And as we'll talk about later, that's been a little bit of an issue for the Red Rams. 19-15 is the score with 19 seconds left on the clock in the first half. Passing out to Durkin, full-court press employed by the Lakers. Durkin is 13 seconds, no shot clock. Zogby tries to go around, gives it to Hobika. Three-point doesn't work. Maeve McNeil from half court. Oh, almost made it. But thus ends the first half of this contest between the Jamesville DeWitt Red Rams and the Skinny Atlas Lakers. The Class B Lakers leading over the Class A Red Rams 19 to 15 as both teams head to the locker room now to start talking adjustments as we've talked about adjustments all game. And we'll go more into that in the second half, but basically when it comes down to it, the Red Rams, both on offense and on defense, they can't seem to adjust, and that could be an issue, uh, especially when they're down by four. So in the meantime, we'll be back in nine and a half minutes with the start of half number two. Sam Gelfand and Tyler Aiken here for JDTV. Thank you so very much for joining us. We'll see you in just a moment.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the James Oldowitz Central High School here in DeWitt, New York. Sam Gelfan, the voice of the Red Rams, alongside my broadcast partner, Tyler Aitken, as we are about ready to come back from halftime here in this contest between the James Oldowitz Red Rams and the Skinny Atlas Lakers. Now, a big name of the game today has been adjustments. Both teams have been making them. What do you think we're going to see coming out of the gate here in the second half? Well, I think if we're going off of what's happened in the past, we're going to say see JD fall behind a little bit more before they have a chance at a comeback. Their third quarter is their worst for scoring. They score less than eight points a game in the third quarter, and their defense also takes a big step back in the second half. They allow six more points per game in the second half than they allow in the first half, which is a very high mark. It's a very high disparity. They also get five less steals per half in the second half. So... JD defensively and offensively is a little bit worse when they come out of the break, and that could be in large part because of the de defensive adjustments made by the opponents. And we'll see what adjustments Skinny Atlas makes as Neil quickly pokes it out to start quarter number three. We thank all of you for joining us here live on JD TV, as we often do throughout the contest. Quickly inbounded to Matty Ramsgard. Rams guard, bouncer to McNeil. You know, usually coming out of the second half, you see both teams return to their starting lineups, but that's not the case for the Red Rams. As Pascal can't connect there, Anaya Neal not a starter, but she is out there right now. And I think Neal starting the second half, but not the first half, probably comes from the fact that she had such a, such a great first half scoring and defensively, so... Seems like JD's looking to get more from her this second half. And right now they're looking to get something from Bella Sindoni. Pounce pass to Zogby and Neil connects. That and is point number eight. That's exactly what JD's looking for from Neil. Easy baskets and great defense. And now Ramsgard, quick pass over to Reed. Reed gets past Neil. And draws a foul. Neil, a very physical player. And we talked at the beginning of the season, you weren't here, but we talked with Nick DeCaney, who's not here tonight, about how tough it can be when you're a sophomore in high school and you're 5'10 and you're kind of growing into your own body, if that makes sense. It can be a challenge, and the same thing actually happened with her older brother, Nurel Neal. He was a member of the varsity squad for two years, and I played JV basketball with him back in the day. And he's, he was a hard worker, very tall. Just sometimes it can be hard to have those fine motor movements inside, be as nimble as you want to be. And especially on defense, it can contribute to some extra fouls here and there. Uh, but at the end of the day, she's just a sophomore. Neal has plenty of room to grow and get better as a basketball player. She has plenty of time. Does not have enough time for three-pointer. Swings it out to Durkin. McKinney, Zogby, Sindoni can't do anything. Back to Neal, who will try from a little bit closer and runs right into a brick wall. And that's the type of hard work and physicality that JD always appreciates. She took a lot of contact on that shot. And now Anaya Neal going to the line. Makes her first. Two for two from Neal right there. That was big for the Red Rams. 21-19, they're still down, but it is a two-point game. Quick pass to Reed. Tries on the ground to Wagner. Off the glass, rebounded by Newman. Reed. And Ramsgard wide left. Durkin will take that. And some rough contact for Miriam Zogby. And I believe they called that a travel. That was an interesting call there. Took a lot of contact. But the Lakers will end up with it. It's 
Some great defense there, forced a air ball from the Lakers. And JD has a chance to even it up right now, down just two points. Neal quick pass to Zogby. Out to Durkin, back to Neal. McKenny Durkin. That zone defense of Skinny Atlas has just been so effective for them all day, but Zogby has plenty of time. Can't do anything with it. And JD just needs to keep someone consistently in the high post because going against a 2-3 defense, the high post is the key to distributing the ball to every other part of the court. They had no one their last possession. Wagner hands off to McNeil. McNeil can't find anything thinking Wagner. Instead, Ramsgard try to get in position. There's a scramble for it. Triple teamed underneath the basket. Loses control momentarily. Spins along the ground. Picked up by Wagner. Hands it back off to Ramsgard. And that is a shot clock violation. And that was some swarming defense from the Red Rams. They had a few opportunities to dive on the ball. And it looks like Coach Sweeney isn't too happy about that. But at the end of the day, they got the stop. It seems it's not about the journey. It's the destination that really counts. As Sindoni passes back to Zogby, who is practically 24 hours. Seems she might be open 24 hours, but not in a row. And they put McKenney in the high post on that possession, which I liked, but they didn't pass it to her at all. They just passed it around the outside and then shot a contested three. That's not what the Red Rams need to do if they want to come back in this game. And now Ramsgard boxed out, so she gives it to Pascal. Pascal double teamed. McNeil now triple teamed. They're going to have to find a different avenue because this lane is all blocked up. They draw a foul. And that was, in my opinion, a not so good call by the referee. Neil was standing straight up, not moving, got ran into, and she got called for a blocking foul. I don't know about that one. You do referee occasionally, don't you, or is that umpire? I, I umpire occasionally. No refereeing in basketball, but I've played it for many years, watched it for many years, and at this point broadcasted it for several years. So, You're as qualified to make that call as anybody. I don't always have the best angles there, but that was rough for Neil, and she's in foul trouble going to the bench. That could be a big factor for the Red Rams trying to fight back. She's been a big force on offense and defense. Leading the Red Rams in scoring so far today, and they might have to uh, give her some time and hold on to her before the fourth quarter, where they may need her the most, especially in this two-point game. It's been so closely contested all game long. As Katie Reed looking for something to do, Rams guard is found once again as usual, sets up for the shot on the run, and it doesn't work out. Rebounded by Macy Durkin. McKenney to Durkin. Durkin instead gives it to Miriam Zogby. Sindoni back to Zogby. 2-3 zone. Durkin from three. And she makes it work from across the county line. And it's been so interesting to see how a JD team that Hasn't shot well from three all season, including tonight. Has seen most of their offensive production from three-point land. And Durkin with yet another rebound. She averages six and a half per game. You know, coming into this game, she had six on offense, 37 on defense. The Red Rams feast on defensive rebounds. And Durkin trying to feast, but it looks like she was full. She did give them the lead though, and Durkin with a nice block. And this was this was a wonderful block. Gotta feel bad for Scanny Atlas, alas, poor Yorick. For I knew him well, Horatio, a man of infinite chest. And that was another great stop for JD. They dove right on top of the ball, and they have a chance to extend their lead which they haven't had a lead since the first half. This has been a big drought for the Rams. Not anymore. And Withers has it taken away by McNeil. 
who puts one up off the glass in transition for fourth point tonight. And on a breakaway layup, the last thing you want to do is commit a foul from behind, didn't really make a play on the ball, and that's just a frustration foul, and that could come back to hurt the Rams later in such a close game. McNeil, 5 for 8 this season from the free throw line. And does not connect. But Scanny Atlas gets it back. Decent, decent number of fans from Scanny Atlas here tonight. It's about a 45 minute drive. They traveled pretty well. And that's impressive. Maybe could be a factor on free throws occasionally. We'll see what happens. You know who continues to be a factor is Matty Ramsgard, up to point number eight. Of course, considering she averages almost 16, the Red Rams have to be happy with that number. And Sindoni steps outside. Wasn't sure she did, but... Or she wasn't sure she did, I should say. As Wagner checks back into this game for Newman. Everyone's lining up like a free throw, but it looks like it's just going to be a normal inbounds for the Rams. There seems to be ample confusion here. I think they're debating if JD has reached five fouls in the half, or in the quarter. And they are one foul shy, so JD will inbounds the ball. And there you go. So McKenney will bring it in for the Red Rams. One more time, don't forget about our comment section here on JDTV. If we like what you're saying in there, we might even read it out on the air, so feel free to chime in. As Durkin at the top to Withers. Double teamed, tripped, and taken away by Maeve McNeil with another breakaway layup. Her second in a row. A lot of turnovers for this Red Rams team in the second half. They need to limit mistakes because they are down by five and their deficit is growing right now. And Scanny Atlas also does play well against Class A teams. They are one and one against them this season. As there's two points for Pascal and a timeout called by the Red Rams. And there are two games against Class A teams this season. Skinny Atlas dropped the first one against Cortland, 38-25, then beat Central Square, 50-31. They can certainly put up a fight with any squad, and JD needs to make some adjustments right now. And we talked about it before this quarter. It, I said the lead was going to get bigger for the Lakers before it got smaller. They are up by seven now. It was just four at the half. And there have been a lot of turnovers for the Red Rams, a lot of them. They're probably nearing that 22.6 that they average. Now the Red Rams are used to coming back from behind, and that should be kept in consideration just last game, in fact, at Fulton, which occurred two days ago. The Red Rams forced a tie and went into overtime for the first time this season and took it in the extra inning, so to speak. They certainly have plenty of time to come back. Well over eight minutes left to play, over nine minutes left to play, but there needs to be some adjustments. They're not really getting any motion on offense, any motion that matters at least. The ball is not working inside enough. It's just been a lot of pass around the outside, shoot it from the corner. And when the threes hit, it's great, but when they don't and they don't really often it really hurts because it takes five seconds off the clock and all of a sudden skinny atlas has the ball back as durkin passes it to mckinney you know it, it's something else that we haven't really talked about yet is that skinny atlas does have a height advantage on james will dewitt probably why they're trying for so many three pointers besides the deficit and the lead of course exactly and the tallest player from the red rams neil is not on the court right now, which certainly hurts. Durkin has all the time in the world to brick that. And now McNeil can try for her third breakaway layup in a row. But the Red Rams catch up this time. Wise to it. Rams guard overshoots. Wagner tries to snatch it. And it goes the Red Rams way. A little too aggressive for the ref referee's liking. 
And this will bring the Red Rams into the one and one. And free throws could be an avenue for them to get back into this game. As we talked about a little bit earlier, the Red Rams leading in free throw percentage over Scandi Atlas, 62.2 versus 48.8 coming into this season. And this number right here could make all the difference. But it looks like they don't want to go to the free throws yet. So that was the fifth foul, which typically brings you into the one and one. They're saying it's only four, though. They're saying it's only four. And it, what's interesting is last time that they said it was four. I don't know if that was a mistake earlier or a mistake now. but It could have been that there were fouls left on the board from the first half. Definitely possible. And a pass directly to Pascal. Maeve McNeil stops, hesitates, Ramsgard does not, and buries the dagger. And the Red Rams would certainly love to get some sort of momentum going into the fourth quarter, because they have none of it right now. As Durkin misses the easy lamp underneath the basket, Hobika, arm hit wide right, but that should, for the third attempt, send her to the free throw line. Obika has not shot a free throw this season. But she does hit her first. So the Red Rams finally in the bonus, though with only 13 seconds left in the third quarter. Not much that'll do them. Get some one extra point. Rams guard, cross half court. Pascal doesn't want to go from long. Hits Rams guard. Double team for a moment. Quick shot. Oh. Rattles out at the buzzer. Toilet bowl right there to end the half. And that is the end of the third quarter. Scanny Atlas has created a substantial lead for themselves. 31-23 to against the Jamesville DeWitt Red Rams. And did you know, Tyler that this is the first time ever that Scanny Atlas and James Wildewitt are facing each other in girls' basketball action. I did not know that. You know, we're two close schools. We play each other in several other sports, so I'm surprised it hasn't happened in girls' basketball. This is actually one of three different first-time matchups for the JD girls' basketball team this season. Their other two will come up in January and February, respectively. First one against Rome Free Academy and the second one against Bishop Grimes. Neither one will be a home game, though, so you'll have to travel to the game if you want to see them. And one little tidbit there, the boys varsity coach for Bishop Grimes is actually the father of Manny McKenney, a player for the Red Rams. And not just a father, but the winningest coach in JD basketball history. He brought several state championships to the Red Rams squad. I'm looking at the state championship posters right now. And he's definitely a revered member of the Red Rams community for anyone old enough to remember all those wins. Brandon Trish, Daywan Coleman, several SU players played for him back in the day. Bob McKenney, a JD legend, as we now start the fourth quarter. And it's a skinny Atlas ball as McNeil pivoting on a little run. Bounce pass into Wagner, too high, and snatched up by Durkin, who has just been an animal of the glass. She has been, and that's one of the reasons JD still has a chance to win this game. She's been attacking the boards on both ends. And Tobika's three-pointer bounces off. But finally, some points put up, courtesy of Gabby Schnorr. That brings it within six. The Red Rams still in striking distance, but they can't light up. They have to keep finding a way to the basket, which has been the biggest issue for them today. A great steal there by McKenney. And another possession for Durkin, who, by the way, leads the Red Rams in an average of 24 minutes per game. So if they need an Ironman, they need her out there this whole time to be able to provide their best chance at winning. She'll be there. Obika, quick bounce pass over to Durkin. Now on the ground to Schnorr, who tries again from the wing. 
Comebacker from Zogby doesn't work either. Wagner with a rebound gives it immediately to Ramsgard. Ramsgard challenges Schnorr. There's the height advantage of Pascal that we were talking about. Pivoting fadeaway, rebounded by who else but Durkin. And just to address a comment, someone was asking why Neil has been out so long. So she was in a little bit of foul trouble. You can see on the bench she's about to come back into this game, but she also don't want to speculate too much, but she was talking to the trainer earlier and holding her arm, which could have been a reason for a longer delay of her re-entering the game. 27-31 currently. As Skinny Atlas has to call that timeout. Who just scored? And now the Red Rams trying to slowly but surely battle back, and we have talked earlier about how the Red Rams are a fourth-quarter team. So they are the comeback kids, and as I was just saying, Neil coming back into this game for the Red Rams could be huge. She's their leading scorer today, provided a lot on the boards, a lot on defense, and that could be the last year J.D. has to potentially take the lead back. Hopefully she's not coming in banged up, though, as we saw her talking to the trainer earlier. Holding her arm could be... A potentially an upper body, uh, upper body injury that she's dealing with. We did see her get fouled hard earlier in the game. Now the big question is her foul trouble. Now do you bring her in with six minutes left, or if you were coaching, would you want to wait till something more like four or three minutes? I would bring her back in now. Uh, I've always been of the belief that you don't want to lose the game. You might as well bring her in and try to get back into this game because if she stays out for too much longer, who knows? It could be a 10-point deficit with three minutes left, and there's no point at that at that time. So with 6:14 remaining, it is 31 to 27, and a scanning Atlas ball brought across half court by Maddie Ramsgard. Pass over to Reed Wagner on the ground to Pascal. Nothing doing. And this goes back to the size advantage you were talking about earlier. McKenney just getting back down and had no choice but to kind of slap for the ball there. Her first foul of the game. Has to go long to Pascal. Bouncing to Wagner. And Wagner, Neal being very careful not to make any sort of physical contact, as you can see. But still provided enough pressure on the shot to stop it from going in. But Pascal reaches over, a bit like a giraffe foraging for the best leaves. It looks like Skinny Atlas's strategy is they have all of their big women on the court right now, Pascal as well as Wagner, and Reed to boot. So they're hoping to get the Red Rams with height. And McNeil looking for a breakaway. Booyah. That ties her career high of eight, ba of eight points. And that's the type of unforced error that can really be a killer for a comeback attempt. 35-27 now. McKenney bounces in. Back to McKenney, who sets from beyond the arc. And it looked good, but it was just a little short. And Coach Sweeney losing it. He cannot believe that there were no fouls called on either of those block attempts. Seeing no. is believing, though. I would share his concern there. It seemed like there was a little bit of contact, but if the refs don't see it, you got to keep your composure. Well, they also didn't see two fifth fouls. That's true. Could be a little bit of pent-up frustration on that Red Rams bench. And Coach Sweeney, usually not the type of coach to get fired up either. He's a pretty calm guy, but I always appreciate, when I back when I played, I always appreciated a coach that would fight for me as a player. And Pascal fighting to get warm as this game continues. She is the second to break double digits for Skinny Atlas. And uh, another unforced error. Ramsgard with a little shake and bake, and Kurt Sweeney has no choice but to call timeout. I mean, what do you do in that situation? There's nothing else you can do. Nothing else you can do, and... Just so many bad passes here from the Red Rams. No, these aren't steals by the Lakers, even though they might go in the scorebook as one. 
JD is just passing it directly to them. There's really nothing else you can do. And while we're talking about the airing of grievances, happy Festivus, everybody. Festivus for the best of us, December 23rd. Yep, get out that pole. Get ready for the feats of strength that these two teams have been battling all night long. It's also National Roots Day, a day encouraging people to go back and look a little bit more into their ancestry. Think a little bit more about where they came from. It's also the birthday of Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam, Victor Martinez, the baseball player, and Finn Wolfhar, who was in Stranger Things. Now the question is, are the Red Rams ready for this? I don't know if they're ready for this. It seems like the game is finally slipping out of their reach. They have one or two more chances here to make it a game, but they're running out of time quickly. Durkin to McKenney and runs into another brick wall with, uh, with Pascal right there. So Zogby has 10 seconds on the shot clock. Durkin weaving through three, four, skyhook, no. And Matty Ramsgard will take it across half court. And now the Lakers are going to try to wind down the clock. Wagner there, and Neal called for the foul. That is foul number four. Two shots for Faith Wagner who is one for two today from the stripe. Make that one for three. And as the time is winding down in this last quarter, I think the size advantage that you were talking about earlier is starting to become a big factor because these JD players are tired. They've got a short bench with so many players out and they're just getting back down and fouling out of tiredness and desperation. When you only have 11 players missing two players, not to mention two of your best, though. Clearly, Miriam Zogby going to try to make up for that. And a timeout getting taken by James Oldewitt to re-strategize. Two of your best players out. An 11-person bench becomes nine, and then you only have four people who are available to come into the game. It's a tough situation, and they had, I think over 10 points that they needed to replace out of nowhere because Ava Sandroni responsible for nine a game and uh, Victoria Payne responsible for a few more as well. Some great defense by Payne. She leads the team in steals. There needed to be contributions from elsewhere. And Neil had a, has had a great game so far despite some foul trouble. We saw a few threes earlier, but it just wasn't really enough to replace all the lost scoring. The Red Rams fighting an uphill battle tonight, effectively. You have to feel for them, really, as they're down by 10 right now against Scanny Atlas, though they are... Scanny Atlas in pretty much all sports has proven to be a Class B powerhouse, so you can't feel too badly. Scanny Atlas now controlling, and McNeil will try to kill some time by passing it to Katie Reed. Rams guard now, directing traffic. Reed, Durkin picked, finds a way into the key, catches her own rebound, but only momentarily. Taken across half court now by the Red Rams. That is Zogby. The Rams but need to work quickly here. They don't have time to really set up and look for a nice slow shot. They got less than three minutes to come back from 10 points. They're still trying to pass around, trying to find the best chances. Withers passes right into the hands of Reed. That's gonna hurt. McNeil now controlling. And once again, we'll kill some time. Reed kept honest by Withers. Hand off to McNeil. McNeil coming around the bend. Out to Ramsgard. Too many people in the key, but it sets up a shot for McNeil, who drains it with no hesitation and no obstacles. And that seems to be the dagger. JD can try to fight back here, but that was a big three and potentially ending this game. It's a 12-point deficit now. The Scanny Atlas Lakers have three players who have reached 10 points tonight. 
10 for McNeil, 12 for Ramsgard, and 10 for Pascal. They've certainly been able to spread out their offense, letting everyone contribute a little bit, and that's the sign of a very successful game when you don't need to rely on one person. Make that 12 for Pascal, tying her career high. Also keep in mind Pascal, 24, just a sophomore. But Macy Durkin is not done yet and will not go gently into that good night. Long pass to McNeil who will slow things way down. And Withers has to foul. Seems to be a little late to be playing the foul game, but I appreciate JD's desire to stay in this game, not give up. Seems like we've got a timeout coming from Skinny Atlas. Now, here's something to consider that uh, obviously the focus is coming on the Red Rams offense. They have allowed close to the average amount of points so far at 43. They usually allow about 42 or 40. But let's take a look at the score rapport for visiting teams. This is all of the teams that the Red Rams have faced this season. And the thing to really take a look at is that it's so evenly spread out. There's no one point where any team has been hammering the Red Rams. Now, teams usually try to get more baskets off from here. That's a given. Every team's going to try to do that. Hence why you see a higher field goal percentage. But really, there's no place on this court where anyone has an advantage on the Red Rams offensively. No, one thing I would take a look at is the right side of the screen is a little bit darker. There's some dark blue over there. And what that seems to me... Most players are right-handed. They're going to go to the right side. JD is giving opponents what they want in large part, which could be a sign that maybe they should start trying to force teams more left in the future. They want to make teams score where they are weaker. But also we should keep in mind that most teams, because of that, will set up their best sharpshooters on the right side of the court. That is correct. Definitely. So definitely some statistical analysis to be done as Wagner passes over to Ramsgard. Ramsgard backs off Withers and puts some through the net. There's a little bit of extra stank on that shot. 30 seconds left. Zogby just wide right, rebounded by Durkin. With 25 seconds left, the Red Rams can at least make this one a little bit closer. Durkin tries for three. Doesn't do it. Little catch and shoot action though for Schnorr. She's quietly up to five points. 10 seconds left, Red Rams foul. You know, kind of like her older brother Gunther, uh, Gabby Schnorr is just such a physical player. She puts 110% into everything she does on the court. The Schnorrs certainly play hard. It's interesting that you mentioned Schnorr and Withers Cousins, there was also the cousin pairing between Gunther and Marshall last year on the boys' varsity team. Ramsgard has five seconds to wait out, and that's all she wrote. The Scanny Atlas Lakers defeat the James Little Witt Red Rams in a hard fought contest. As you mentioned, the Red Rams had about 10 points to make up, lacking Victoria Payne and Ava Santroni. It was going to be a hard one, and if they had those extra 10 points, then this one would have been right down the middle, about as close of a contest as you could have found. The Red Rams still incredibly proficient offensively, but against this much taller and more energized Scanny Atlas team, it was not going to be enough. It was a hard-fought battle. They remained close up until the third quarter, and I think the bench depth hurt as Skinny Atlas was able to pull away late in this game and... I think JD was tired and defeated after this game, but hopefully when they get their starters and stars back, they'll be able to get back on their feet and hopefully gain some momentum back for their season. We will not have another girls basketball contest for you until January, though. I believe that'll be against Cortland if my memory serves me right. But I can tell you that our next broadcast will be Tuesday. Boys basketball against Central Square. That'll be our final broadcast of 2021 before we will join you in 2022 in January, so you will not want to miss that. It'll be a great game, Central Square and JD and boys basketball action. But until then, 
Thank you so very much for joining us here tonight. My name is Sam Gelfand, the voice of the Red Rams. On behalf of Tyler Aitken, my broadcast partner, Amanda Aitken, man in the camera, and this entire JDTV broadcast crew, have a very good night wherever you may be.